Okay. Uh, dear Ms. Eva Sundari, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, appreciate your uh, taking the time uh, to be interviewed for COP Dialogue. Uh, this interview is for COP Dialogue 4. Uh, we launched COP Dialogue in 20, November 2021. Uh, in each issue of COP Dialogue, we look at a particular uh, issue or theme uh, that is relevant to cooperatives and bring in perspectives from across the Asia-Pacific region. The first issue looked at the cooperative identity, and this coincided with the ICA Congress on uh, cooperative identity, which was held in November uh, 2021. Uh, the second co-op dialogue looked at innovation in cooperatives, and the third one on climate change. Uh, 2023 marks the midpoint of, of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And so we felt that uh, this would be a good time uh, to look at how cooperatives have done uh, in relation to the SDGs, because cooperatives are recognized as important players. Uh, they have been mentioned in the uh, 2030 agenda. And, and this is because of the unique nature of cooperatives in that they promote uh, democracy, enhance income, uh, keep member interest at the center, foster social innovation, care for the environment, and et cetera. And cooperatives across the Asia-Pacific region are also actively engaged in the implementation of the SDGs. So the uh, fourth issue of COP Dialogue, uh, we will cover the work carried out by cooperatives in implementing the SDGs uh, at the regional, uh, national, and local level. Uh, given your perspective, uh, given you're an academic, an activist, a parliamentarian, a politician, uh, you are uniquely positioned to bring diverse perspective to the role of cooperatives in the SDGs, uh, in areas of gender, human rights, uh, the climate change, the list goes on. So we are very grateful that you've taken the time to join us today, and we are very thankful for that. So uh, let me uh, begin, uh, and I will start with the G20. Uh, India this year holds the presidency for the G20. Uh, last year, uh, Indonesia uh, held the uh, presidency of the G20. Uh, and during this uh, G20 in Indonesia, in one of the uh, side events uh, organized by Inkul Federation, of which you are a part of, uh, you made a call to cooperators to play a proactive role in uh, development discussions uh, at all levels. So uh, could you share with us the role cooperators play in Indonesia's current development context? What are the positives? What are the negatives? What are the areas that need to be strengthened? Uh, so I, I, I would like to start with that. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Bellu. Uh, I think and this is really a good time and I feel being honored yes, uh, that you invite me uh, to discuss and also share the good and the bad situations of uh, Indonesian cooperative right now. Uh, recently, like uh, maybe uh, you are aware that uh, there are uh, phenomena uh, that the cooperatives are being used uh, for bad guys uh, to establish uh, the institutions that do uh, the loan shark that suck the money of the people, but uh, they're using cooperative in that. So there is a national scandal that involve uh, the very healthy people who ju he just wants to uh, increase money in very instance because these fake cooperatives offer them with the result, big results uh, above the average, uh, average interest of the uh, bank. And uh, these people wants to have a lot of money in very instance without working hard 
and uh, these uh, bad people uh, offered them this very uh, bad, uh, bad offer, yeah, because it's really uh, unaccountable offers in terms of interest, in terms of uh, the way they run, the way they invest, they, they, they will invest. So it's totally fake, yeah. But then uh, those big uh, numbers of the people who have been deceived by these fake cooperatives report to the police because of what things have been promised and never occurred. That's why then uh, it became a uh, very big uh, scandal in Indonesia. And uh, we were shocked because not only one big uh, fake uh, cooperative, but at least three yeah, who were in, at a very national debate and also national discourse. Yeah. So that's in the national level. But at the same time, uh, it happened also at the grassroots. Uh, because when I was uh, still active in the parliament, uh, I was uh, called by some of my constituents and report the same things. And they use also uh, the cooperative, the fake cooperative to do the same business. Uh, therefore, if you say, okay, what kind of situation that uh, now uh, we are having in Indonesia in terms of cooperative, yeah, and the trust of the people to the cooperative is getting lower because of the malpractice of this kind of situation. Uh, however, there are also good news, yeah, because uh, within INCUR, uh, because we are federations, uh, there are numbers of uh, cooperatives in some areas in Indonesia who did very good performance uh, in terms of uh, the identity of cooperative. And mostly they are women. So we have uh, cooperatives run by women head of families, uh, mostly in their, oh, from uh, the poor people. And they have managed to sustain the cooperative and then also uh, in terms of asset, uh, they like escalated uh, if we compare with 15 years ago when they started, seems like uh, from zero, uh, for instance, like uh, the uh the the uh, uh mandatory dues the mandatory dues because they are so poor so they just contribute uh some of rice some of uh the in nature and natural uh, of the agriculture but now uh, they have reported to us that uh, they have assets uh, and also uh, the wealth of the organization is billions this good women from the poor ones. There are three or three cooperatives that have shown the same things. Uh, seems like uh, they work slowly, but surely uh, they don't want. Uh, they didn't do any uh, works in RAS, but uh, it's really helped their lives. The drop out, the drop off of the student of the children also reduce, and also they can free themselves from the loan shaft, which is usually uh, really in the threat of these uh, women from the poor family and etc. So yes, there are good news and bad news. And when you ask, uh, what shall we do and what things that we must strengthen? Yes, of course, we must also push and the cultural efforts that uh, convince people if you do uh, the cooperative in the right manner and you follow the identity of uh, the money don't play also don't try to rush into the and you bypass the process and uh, we can show you these are the good cooperatives uh, of the women uh, within the in court and that have shown that the cooperative really helped their life uh, and they became more educated, they became solid than before, and they know how to solve the problems uh, of the daily life. And uh, there are good things of the cooperative. So yeah, at the national level, we were hit by the bad uh, news of this fake cooperative. But uh, at the grassroots, 
we knew some numbers of uh, the women cooperatives who did very well. So this is the situation. Okay, so that's good. I think uh, you hit on uh, the points. The important thing there is that we need to look at cooperatives which adhere to the identity, which are able to build on trust and be able to address uh, needs of people, and that makes the difference. Uh, I will uh, stick, uh, come to the uh, G20, which I talked about. I understand Inkur Federation uh, had played a role along with other cooperatives during the G20. So can you talk about uh, what was the role played and did you see anything concrete come out of these engagements at the G20? Yeah, I must admit, if I compare, if we compare uh, with the results of the uh, recommendations from uh, G20 before, like the one in Japan and the other ones in Italy, uh, the cooperative or ICA yeah, have managed to put some recommendations in the highest level because uh, they did the interventions uh, from uh, starting. Uh, where they start, uh, where they start sequence, but not uh, like what uh, we did. Yeah, we just came in into the middle of the process in which all the task force has been formed, and that's why then we try to knock the door each of the working group, and we managed to uh, interference or not really interference. We joined the three working group. First, the civil society. Uh, seconds the governments, uh, which is really higher than others, yeah. And uh, the third is uh, the business one. Uh, but uh, we only manage uh, to uh, organize and the parallel events, yeah. Not then in the mainstream of the events. Uh, however, some of the uh, serpa of each of the uh, working group came to us and then also complained, why you join uh, very late? Uh, because this is very important. Because I report to them, look, uh, in Tokyo and also in Italy, the uh, cooperative is really part and in the mainstream. But in Indonesia, why you cannot include us, even though we came a little bit late in the middle of the process? Because all your recommendations finally you must open your eyes that cooperative is really key of the SDGs, of the successful SDGs. And I also pre present the, uh, the research yeah, of the ILO with ICA. And uh, they say, oh my God, this is really important, especially those who came from civil society and the uh, planning board uh, of the government said the, the same things. Yeah? Uh, and so they regret. Therefore, uh, we just uh, opened their eyes and uh, we make them understand that really they miss out the most important things. If you want to succeed uh, for the SDGs, uh, you don't have any other choice than include the uh, cooperative because uh, this is uh, the uh, organizations that can fulfill the 10 target of SDGs out of the seven pins. So this is really uh, important. And uh, I challenge also, okay, which of the cooperatives in Indonesia that can uh, beat us, the cooperative? And they say, yes, uh, I think cooperative is really important. And it's really in the heart of the, our efforts uh, to have uh, inclusive uh, developments. So this is the situation. So I'm not happy to share, yeah, but uh, at least uh, uh, I hope that in G20 in India, uh, you don't repeat our falls. And also uh, the committee would also have the situations that uh, they became regretful, like the one in Indonesia, because they missed out the very uh, key elements, how to make uh, SDGs uh, can be achieved and the goals of SDGs can be achieved uh, by 2030. Okay, uh, I think that it's, uh, yes, it seems to be a mixed uh, outcome. Uh, in that uh, while there has been engagement and uh, concerns and work of cooperatives have been put either at the side events or through the Sherpas, but uh, in terms of uh, getting mentioned seems to be lacking. And that's something yeah. in terms of how we engage in the process from the beginning uh, becomes very important. 
you mentioned that uh, when your discussion with the Sherpas, you talked about the role of cooperatives in the SDGs. Uh, one aspect uh, which is uh, with the SDGs, which is different from the earlier uh, Millennium Development Goals, is the voluntary national review. Uh, it's an important mechanism to report on the implementation of SDGs. And Indonesia has been reporting, it's reported twice, I think in 2017 and 2021. And uh, in the 2021 voluntary national review, uh, there is specific mention that uh, strengthening entrepreneurship, micro and small medium enterprises and cooperatives is one of the four national priority programs uh, closely related to SDG 8, which is on decent work and uh, economic growth. Uh, and this for the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the government has policies to increase uh, access to cooperatives and MSMEs. Uh, and so this is an important recognition and uh, which is promising for the future. Uh, how do you see the contribution of cooperatives to SDGs and in specific reference to SDG 8 uh, in Indonesia? Yeah, I think uh, the uniqueness of the cooperative, I think you have mentioned in the beginning yeah, that uh, we have a very high standard uh, moral values yeah, in how to run the business. And uh, it's really in line uh, with the for instance, the conventions of ILO on the same uh, area yeah, that we uh, must have the decent and also uh, positively can contribute uh, for the economic right. This is really balance yeah, of uh, the two goals at the same time. And this is really in the characters of cooperative. Yeah? Uh, and I think it's difficult to mention other economic institutions who do both at the same time, at the same time strength except uh, uh except cooperative therefore i think uh, uh the co the uh, the situations in indonesia for instance because uh before we organize or before we become the host we are uh, undergoing the situations which is bad globally as a pandemic and in every crisis always the informal sectors always the domestic areas of economics and the helpers and the safe uh, safety net of the uh, crisis situations of the uh, Indonesia at that time. And uh, because it relates to the uh, informal sectors, uh, therefore uh, the existence of a cooperative with embedded uh, the uniqueness uh, characters like we have discussed before, it's really important because uh, other organizations they don't have that characters. Uh, therefore, if we push a people to to uh, to establish more cooperative and also uh, to uh, to develop the existing one, the cooperative ones, and uh, make more people to uh, join or to include in the cooperative, uh, then we can empower people in the decent situations of the work while. Uh, we are encountering uh, the difficulties of economics, but at the same time also uh, the cooperative will make sure that uh, the welfare of the members uh, will increase yeah, by uh, the time. So the economic growth at, at the same time also the decency of the situation of the work will be achieved at the same time. So uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, why then the call from Indonesia and the recognitions of Indonesia is really valid because uh, we are really uh, experiencing that uh, during the pandemic. So cooperatives, again, looks like even in Indonesia, similar to what we've seen in many other countries, that during the mm. COVID-19 pandemic, cooperatives were able to respond uh, to needs of their members and uh, especially uh, given that the informal sector and the services sector were badly affected, that they were able yeah. to uh, step in and address the needs and concerns of uh, members uh, during this difficult time. And uh, from what you say, it's been no different in Indonesia also. Cooperatives have played an important part. Uh, coming to another SDG, 
how are cooperatives in Indonesia contributing to SDG 5, uh, which is gender equality? Could you share some examples from, say, Inkur Federation or any other uh, cooperatives that you represent or you're part of? Uh, this is really a new finding, and it can be the area to be researched, uh, Mr. Bellu, because we notice after we interact with uh, other uh, members of federations, and we ask, uh, okay, uh, can you tell us how uh, you start the cooperative? And uh, we really observe that uh, most of this uh, group of women actually in the beginnings were part of the programs, donor-driven program. For instance, like uh, they really, uh, they work, uh, in the beginning, they work uh, for uh, the issue of uh, uh, reproductive rights. And they work also for uh, the, uh, the, uh, the small enterprises. And, and they work also for anti-trafficking. But you know, when uh, the donor stopped the working, then uh, you slowly they dissolve. But some groups on the leaders of these groups, uh, they are very smart. So starting from uh, zero phase, and they have already uh, established cooperative, even though the donors ask them to do uh, another project, but and they know exactly of what will happen after uh, the money stop. Therefore, then uh, they established cooperative since the beginning. And until now, they sustain. If I compare with other uh, projects, they just uh, dissolve and we don't know where, are they, where they are now, yeah, the women. But three organizations that I observe, uh, they can, uh, manage uh, the they can uh, manage uh, the sustainability of the the community, and and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. I think uh, we ICA uh, Pacific must research this, and I think Mr. Suroto will lead you to this organization that we have discussed last night, and I was so surprised with the uh, the information from him that no no not only three I think we have another two that uh, maybe we can offer ICA to, uh, to be researched again. So this is the unique things. And I think uh, this is a good news here yeah, uh, for, uh, for us yeah, that uh, somehow uh, the cooperatives is really the answer uh, how to uh, overcome uh, the difficulties of uh, the women uh, who are from the poor family, but uh, they can organize themselves, they can empower themselves, in terms of economics, in terms of politics, and etc., and, and cooperative is really the media for them. Yeah, that's an important point which you brought, which this uh, the distinction uh, between cooperatives and other forms. That in cooperatives, as members, you need to put your own money in and make sure that your and mm -hmm. business or whatever your enterprise you're in is able to sustain itself rather than depend on external funding which can be yeah. there or not be there. And so that's something which we need to uh, distinguish as us and uh, needs to be built upon. And definitely we are, we'll be uh, happy to uh, look into the three examples that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned there are many more. Uh, this would mm -hmm. be definitely an area for us to uh, look into further and be able to showcase and highlight that uh, uh, this is the way in which cooperatives uh, are making a difference. Uh, yeah. You are an advocate of gender equality in Indonesia and in the region. So what are some of the issues faced by women uh, in the cooperative sector that you uh, see? And how do you think that some of these uh, the issues that they face can be uh, addressed or are being addressed? Uh, my finding before, yeah. Uh, so uh, whenever uh, I was asked by uh, the coordinators of the networks, I always remind the same things. Okay, you may work for women empowerments in politics, 
women's involvement in the uh, environmental issue, or maybe uh, women involvement in economics. But if you don't educate them about the principle, about the solidarity, about the common sense, about the principles of cooperative. <laughs> this is what so-called empowerment, based on your own strengths. Uh, I think you, in terms of sustainability, uh, you will fail. In terms of effectiveness, efficiency, you will fail also. Therefore, now, they, they always uh, hold the same assumptions. If you want to empower women, you must start empowering them with the economic things. Once you gain your uh, your strength, your sovereignty uh, in economic power, then uh, you have a very big uh, asset modalities to empower other aspects of women's group. So yeah, just like uh, the simple expressions, you cannot educate people if uh, the stomach of if their stomach is empty but if uh, you fulfill their basic needs of the material yeah, then you can ask them to think about strategic things but first you must know the basic uh, needs then uh, the strategic needs uh, this is uh, the learning process and the learnings, uh, the lesson learned that we draw from uh, the latest situations during the pandemic. Before I think related to the questions, I think it's really valid. If then uh, we focus on, uh, because we have discussed before that the cooperative is the only uh, economic uh, institutions that can empower people in many aspects, yeah? not only economic, political, socially, cognitively, and etc. Then uh, let us start uh, boosting uh, the movements in uh, strengthening people using uh, cooperatives, especially for women. I think, uh, again, you touched upon an important point. One of the fifth principle of cooperatives talks about uh, education, training, and information. And mm -hmm. a lot of time and effort uh, needs to first go towards uh, education and making sure that members are aware of what it means to be a member, what it means mm. to be part of a cooperative. It's not just coming and starting a, a business or running an enterprise, but what is it that you see your role? What is the part that you need to play, I think, is very important. And uh, uh, you touched upon that, that education is key. And then, of course, addressing basic needs and then building upon that are all important things that we need to be uh, looking at. But uh, your point is well taken. Uh, so uh, International Women's Day this year, uh, the focus was on uh, digital uh, innovation and technology for uh, gender equality. So a couple of questions here. One is in terms of uh, how can technology be used uh, in the uh, in relation to education, because you mentioned education is important. So how how can we uh, integrate technology and education? And two is how are cooperatives in Indonesia uh, faring in the area of adoption of technology uh, in the different aspects of their work? I think I will take my uh, uh, what I have done here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. to answer those two questions. Yeah. So I came from uh, the cooperatives that involve the uh, women's uh, farmers here. Yeah? And uh, we are aware that uh, we are really uh, left behind in terms of access to uh, digital, especially when uh, we are challenged to uh, do our business through the digital networking. But then I approach uh, the uh, nations own banking because they are very limited. We cannot open the brands in the villages. Then I connect them with the cooperative based on the villages. I ask them, why don't you two, co uh, why don't you two uh, establish the cooperation? 
uh, such as that you use this women cooperative as the agent of the bank because uh, they cannot open in very uh, in every village. Then by that, uh, the members of uh, the cooperative will have access to uh, have uh, for the financial literacy and also the technological literacy, even though what they do is very simple, like how to open uh, the accounts of the villages through the uh, cooperative as a part of the uh, branch of the banks which situated in the uh, sub-district. And some of, some of this uh, cooperative women work here yeah? because, oh, I know how to use this, 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 this. I know the, the, the tools of technology and etc. Uh, so they can send money from the village to the sub-district uh, office. They can also be the agent to pay for the electricity, uh, for the uh, fee of the tax of the uh, houses and etc. So they are familiar now with how to work using the technology, but not independently, yeah? but part of the system which is already established, but a bit, uh, bit by bit, then they are familiar and know how to use it. And from there, they can, uh, uh, they can develop the idea. Uh, how about if we use uh, the M banking to uh, submit uh, our uh, mandatory dues, voluntary dues, even saving? Because we cannot get together at that time. Because it's Corona at the time. So we use that. But of course, there are some difficulties because some of the members said, my money is so small. Why must I uh, open a bank account? Why don't I just came there and then submit as I did before like that? But uh, I think they have learned somehow, yeah, the management, yeah, how to work uh, uh, in their main business using technology by uh, part of the established system. But how about uh, in general uh, technology in cooperatives? Do you see uh, uh, a lot of uh, cooperatives adopting technology in their work? I think so. <laughs> we push to, we force to, yeah. Especially uh, if we, when we use Zoom meeting, that force every member to uh, buy in the cell phone and how to uh, download the application. And now they can uh, uh, come on, uh, they do the business using uh, the cell phones. And uh, this is part of our capacity building workshop. Uh, okay, how can we use this cell phone to do business, etc. So yes, very slow, but uh, I think somehow we are forced uh, and we don't have any other choice than embrace this technology. And it's important for uh, the committee, yeah? uh, for the CEO of the cooperative also to uh, create events to do the capacity building, uh, especially in this uh, area, technology. Start with the simple things, how to, uh, to sell your stuff uh, using uh, the social media. This is a must. And I see many cooperatives now has uh, account in Facebook and IG, uh, Instagram, and start uh, flashing all the information from there. Okay. Uh, you, you are part of the ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights. Uh, and this parli uh, the parliamentarians have been uh, advocating on some critical issues such as climate change. So how do you uh, see the impact of climate change on cooperatives and what is it that cooperatives need to do or are doing in order to make the, themselves and their members more resilient? Uh, towards uh, the impact of climate change? Yeah, I think I will refer also on the cooperative that I involved here, uh, that even though we do uh, the business uh, selling, produce and selling uh, the hydroponic vegetables, 
but somehow we uh, must extend our understanding about uh, the business we are doing. That a hey, listen, uh, we must plan, plan, not only cut off, cut off, but we must plan, renew the uh, the plans and etc. And they know, uh, hey, why then the air, the atmospheres become cooler uh, by we doing uh, this uh, business and. So somehow uh, we must educate them also that uh, we are part of the big problems about climate change and let us do something productive and positive contribution contribution upon that big uh, big problems of the world and not on the way around we make uh, the situation became worse that's why in the cooperative and also on this uh, group. Uh, they extend also the functions. Uh, now the kindergarten students start visiting uh, this uh, greenhouse of this uh, cooperative and they can educate about climate change there. But we have show and look, we have done something simple, but uh, it will affect positively to the uh, big situations of climate change. Just very simple, but uh, the perspective must be uh, broadened extend it and include the global context. And I think cooperative by nature uh, must also have the same standpoint like um, the ones that uh, the women farmers have done here, yeah, that oh, we are part of the big uh, situations, and but we must uh, do positive things, not a negative thing to the uh, existing situation. This is the simple things the cooperative can do actually. Uh, but are there any, say with INCOR uh, Federation or any other cooperatives that you engage with, are they taking any actions on climate change in terms of, uh, uh, do you see any practical actions that they have been taking? I think so somehow because most of the federations uh, are situated in uh, the islands of uh, Borneo. Uh, which is the climate change impact was obvious there. Uh, therefore, actually, we are forced, we are being forced by the situation there and that uh, we must do some things on this uh, issue, climate change, because we are really experiencing this. The problem is not in the future problem. It is now. The problem is now. And that's, that's why then uh, when INCUR uh, start to extend the business, uh, that include also the uh, agriculture business which responsive to the uh, climate change, such as the sustainable sustainable agriculture products, and also the tourism. Uh, one of the cooperative there try to uh, develop the idea, the concept of uh, of having a model for uh, tourism which is responsive to the uh, climate change as a village uh, tourist destination, yeah, mm. that uh, educational one. Okay. Uh, you have been a parliamentarian and you're also planning to contest again next year and I hope you all you win. Uh, Inshallah. <laughs> uh, the question is, uh, as, uh, have you seen in Indonesia parliamentarians come together uh, and advocate for cooperatives or across the ASEAN level, is there any network of parliamentarians who are active in cooperatives uh, advocating? Or is there something that you see parliamentarians uh, in Indonesia and across ASEAN and across the Asia Pacific region uh, uh, that uh, we could uh, look at parliamentarians doing something to promote uh, cooperatives in their country and across the region? There is a potentially for that. For instance, I, I was the one established uh, the caucus for uh, freedom for religions and faith, because we knew there are some individual MPs who have concerns and also commitment. But we must put together, and then uh, we can uh, establish caucus, yeah, the informal, uh, informal group, and it will it will work because we we share the same concern. So I think, suppose I, then I win, I will have another caucus because I have already established three caucuses here 
and I can continue by uh, establish uh, the the new ones uh, for the cooperative or economic democracy, uh, economic democracy and cooperation uh, and cooperative. I think that's a good uh, topic, the good concept, the good themes uh, for uh, the future caucus in parliament. Because uh, in according to our five principles of uh, Pancasila, uh, Pancasila, the fifth uh, principle is about that, uh, democracy and economy. And the fourth principle is solidarity. So if we put together the fourth and the fifth principles, it's a cooperative. And therefore, I think this is uh, the new idea and new platform for my future uh, about terms. Yeah, suppose I uh, make it. Yeah, I think that's, uh, we find that, for example, in Australia, uh, they have the uh, parliamentarians who are friends of cooperatives, so that uh, you are able to, they are the cooperatives in Australia are able to engage with these parliamentarians and bring their uh, issues uh, in front of parliament. And uh, even in one of the minister's conference, there was a, uh, one of the points was to form a network of parliamentarians across the Asia-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something which we can, uh, given your uh, being as a parliamentarian and in your uh, knowledge about other parliamentarians, maybe it's something which we can think about and see how we right. can uh, develop one, maybe to start with in ASEAN and see how it can be yeah. across the region. Because we need to, also, even at the ASEAN level, uh, there is a, there is, much work which can be done with the ASEAN Secretariat and in the ASEAN mm -hmm. in uh, cooperatives into the discussion. Uh, even in ASEAN now, the discussion around cooperatives is limited and limited to agriculture. But then uh, there are many other areas where cooperatives are involved in. So maybe uh, that's an area which we can explore for the future. Uh, sure. Yes, I, I, I'm very uh, convinced, yeah, that uh, this will be my new portfolio. Okay, uh, that's good. Better. So we'll be in touch on that. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Maybe the last uh, last question would be, what would be your, your suggestion to the ICA uh, to promote a uh, role of cooperatives in uh, relation to SDGs in uh, individual countries at a regional level? Uh, is there something which you would like to see the ICA do uh, more in the coming future? Uh, I think so. Uh, since we have already many uh, research uh, that show uh, how a significance uh, of the cooperative and the roles of cooperative in speeding up uh, to achieve uh, the SDGs uh, goals, I think the next step then we must uh, uh, disseminate them, socialize them, socialize them in uh, many stakeholders, yeah, uh, like in Indonesia to the groups of MPs and also uh, to uh, plan national planning board. And uh, if you start with MPs, then MPs can uh, use it as a platform for doing politics within the parliaments and the new platform, I think they can be the champions to do the transformations and to do also to mainstreaming cooperatives into uh, development uh, strategy and etc. But we must have champions in this year. Maybe we can start uh, with the uh, with the MPs and then MPs can then unlock uh, the network, set up the network uh, and work together with the civil society, but at the same time also tend to, uh, to expand the outreach with the uh, government's institutions. Uh, this is what we do actually, uh, to advocate the certain issue, like uh, the issue of uh, the freedom for religions. I did the same things. We established the caucus as the motors, yeah, as the champions. And then each of us will uh, work uh, at the same strategy to uh, enlarge the networks yeah, in each of the constituency and the commissions and also to influence uh, the government's partners and etc. But yes, we must create the champions. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, thank you very much uh, for taking the time. Uh, it's been a very uh, interesting and uh, 
discussion uh, for us. Thank you for uh, taking the time and sharing your thoughts and experiences. And there are a few action items which we can uh, work together uh, in order to be able to promote uh, the role of cooperatives in country and at a regional level. So we'll definitely look forward uh, to your support, your guidance, and see how we can uh, continue uh, our engagement and continue to work together. So thank you so much for uh, taking sure, Mr. Bello. and uh, we'll okay. definitely be in touch. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.